Porpoise Pod coming at you. Miami Dolphins lose today 33 17 to the San Francisco 49ers and the refs as they drop to eight and four on the season. Solana's boots on the ground at Levi Stadium, a crooked stadium where they do what the fans want. Uh, what's going on, Solana? How are you? Yeah, not a. Uh... Not so much fun when when you lose. I, I almost forgot how it felt to lose a game, it's and uh, it, it hurts. I don't like it. I don't I like know. it. I know, especially because I don't know. I feel like the Dolphins just left a ton of plays out there. I, I don't ton. feel like the, I don't feel like the Niners. Uh, they're good. Uh, you know, they're they're a really good team, but I mean, they're they're good enough to where their backup quarterback can can do what he did to us. No, like I just feel like the Dolphins just didn't uh, didn't execute in the first half, and then things kind of just. Didn't didn't roll their way in the second half, and uh, and I I think that was the difference. Yeah, the second half annoys me uh, a lot more than the, the the first half does. I think the first half we did see their defense come out and do some things effective. Obviously, the Dolphins weren't sharp um, by far. I mean, we can get to it a little bit later, more fullness, but definitely to his worst game of the season by far, and a big reason that they you know took so long to even be in this game. Also, a reason they were even in the game late. Um, but I, I heard some of that theory, too, that they felt like, you know, that the Dolphins were a much better team than this Niners team. I feel like the Niners stars, I mean, all shine for them. Bosa had three sacks. Trying to tackle Debo Samuel was like trying to tackle an actual moose. Christian McCaffrey was unbelievable today. Um, so I do think that they're uh, of their best players, all of their best players showed up today. And I would say for the Dolphins, like Tyree Kill showed up today. Christian Wilkins was a monster today, but a lot of their other best players, uh, I don't think gave, uh, you know, quite the performance you'd expect. And, uh, and certainly that starts with, with QB one. I don't, uh, this was uh this was not a sharp game for him at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the interceptions, right? Like uh, he had gone 193 passes without throwing a pick. And then he gets two back-to-back -back interceptions on back-to-back -back throws, which is crazy. But that second one, I mean, he just has Tyreek Hill wide open, and he yeah. throws it behind him. You know, like that—that's that's not that's not too alike. So I think you're right. I mean, this was probably his worst game of the season, and um, I mean, he, he also took a big hit at the very end of the game, Tobin, that led to the uh, to the fumble recovery touchdown. And I got I got an email from the Dolphins, uh, not not just me, but all the uh, the media did that, like technically was on the injury report. Like we got an update on Tua Tagovailoa, so. That means like it was significant enough where they sent out a, an update. So, um, well, they also, I mean, they didn't take him out. I wonder if that has to do with them taking him out for the last play too. Like, you yeah. know, because it's a little bit like, oh, you're taking your quarterback out for the last drive. That's like a little white flagish. So maybe they were just saying he was dinged with something. I don't know. I think I, I, we'll, we'll see. He does. He has had uh, the ankle injury before, you know, based on time constraints for everybody, just for disclosure, we're doing this. We probably won't hear from the, you know, I won't get quotes from the uh, the coach on it. Although, too, is uh, he did say it sucks. We didn't do what we wanted to as a team, and it starts with me. So, he's taking uh, accountability for the loss, which he definitely uh, he definitely needs to because uh, yeah. I, you know, the first half. I don't know. That was like, first of all, I mean, the game starts off, which starts off a seventy five yard touchdown. <laughs> I'm saying it's pants immediately, and I have to put my pants on for the rest of the game, which was unfortunate, and maybe I shouldn't have because once my pants were back on. All of a sudden, I don't know who that guy was. He was like, he was heaving balls way over people. He was not sharp at all. And it didn't feel like it was necessarily a uh, a, a lack of time thing. Um, he just didn't, he just did not have that, that pristine touch we're used to with him. Yeah, no, it wasn't a lack of time. You know, we were, we were talking about it, me and Joe here in the booth where we're saying in the first half, Mike McDaniel drew up an incredible scheme offensively, like, the, the plays were there. The opportunities were all there. Tua just didn't make the throws. Simple as that. He had Jalen Waddle on a play. It was like a 13-yard comeback route. Just totally underthrew him. And then the, the Jeff Wilson wheel route over the top yeah. where it's, it's a blown coverage. And, I mean, if he just throws a catchable ball, Jeff Wilson walks into the end zone. It's like a 65-yard play, another chunk play for a touchdown, and he just threw a bad ball. Like, there yeah. were, there yeah, were yeah. a number of plays like that where Tua just – Made up, made a bad throw, and uh, and the Dolphins suffered because of it. Yeah, like Jalen Waddle being one of five on targets. Like, when do you ever see that? He's the safety blanket. Him and two are like, they they're they're on such the same page all the time, and it just it couldn't get going. I know that he was a little bit banged up at certain points, so we didn't get a full Jalen Waddle game. And I'm talking about early on. He was like over four to Jalen. Like, what the hell is that? That never happens. 
So, yeah, he had to work himself out of a really great hole. And then the times, like you said, that they had opportunities and he did it, somebody else didn't step up. And, you know, there was certainly a couple calls where you're just like, I, I don't know what that Robert Hunt holding was. I mean, like even even Moose Johnson was like, if that's holding, I've held my entire career. So that like completely uh, that completely ruined a drive. And uh, and and, you know, they had this tripping call on Melvin Ingram. And I was like, oh, what the hell is that? I mean, like Melvin Ingram and Trent and Trent Williams literally were, were toe tapping to each other. And and the and uh, dude just falls over his face, and they call a penalty. I was like, "What? What is this crookedness going on here?" It's like Tony Brothers was out there. <laughs> we could hear Trent uh, uh, Melvin Ingram literally telling the official, "Our cleats got stuck to each other." Yeah, like, that's, you all, see that, it. that's it. That's all that happened. You could hear it. He's just yelling, "Our cleats got stuck to each other." That's it. That's all that happened. And the officials, I mean, you know, they didn't want to hear it. I, I'm with you. Like some of the calls were, were questionable, but man, like. I was watching. I was watching a highlight really quickly before we started recording, and uh, and it, it's frustrating knowing that the Dolphins, with that first play, because Tobin at the end of the first quarter, two was three of nine, 112 yards and a touchdown. But if you take away one completion to, to Trent Sherfield for 75 yards, I mean, it's it's a pretty abysmal performance in that first quarter, and yeah. and and all those throws were throws we're used to seeing Tua make, which is why it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Yeah. Like, I mean, like he, the fact that he almost threw for 300 yards again today, but you know, <laughs> threw for, you know, it was 54 completion percentage, you know, 18 to 33. That's like, you know, that's just not him, man. And then it was, it was, it's an odd thing. Um, and it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. And I think that, you know, just, and I think the frustrating thing is, yeah, the defense definitely deserves some blame too, for the standpoint of man, they couldn't get, the damn Niners off the field on third down. And that I think was the most frustrating. And there were just opportunities. And yeah, I know Debo Samuel is a monster to bring down, but they had him corralled so many times on with multiple guys. And he's just blowing up everybody like bowling pins. And, you know, to, they, to see birdie, like carving up uh, birdie, uh, like, like the Marvel birdie. to <laughs> Purdy to see Purdy out there carving up the blitz. I was like, Oh, this is, this is so irritating that this is happening right now and and you know Tobin no pass rush from the Dolphins that to me is what really stood out today I mean you don't get pressure on a rookie quarterback playing his he's a seventh round pick he's Mr. Irrelevant he's like playing his first real snaps in the NFL like meaningful football and uh and and the one time they're able to really get pressure on him he throws an interception and Xavier Howard comes down with it also uh, a funny tidbit from the broadcast where Obviously, X Man comes up with the pick. You're hyped for him, first interception of the year. But Cephalo makes a, a great point where he's saying they were on like the 40 ish yard line and he picked it off at, it was fourth down. He picked it off at like near the 20. He's like, I understand you want the interception, but probably should have just batted that one down. You get the ball 30 yards the other way in better field goal position. But I'm thinking to myself, X Man needs a pick. He needs he needs one. You I know? think it's it was a tough it was such a tight play too. Like he caught it like a receiver. You know, it's yeah. not like one of those where the plays in front of you. You know what I mean? Like he's he's right there, step for step. So I get the criticism, but then they got it back like immediately anyway. Like the next play, I think was like a twenty five yard pass or something like that. Yeah. So I but I understand they made the same point on the uh, on the on the TV broadcast too. And I was like, I get it, but like you get the ball back. Who cares? I, I got to tell you the one thing, I think the thing that bums me out the most today, speaking of calls, the thing that bums me out the most about not getting this win was Mike McDaniel going for it on his own 18 yard line. Oh I my mean, God. The balls on this coach. Oh the my and dude, God. let me tell you something. It's a good game. He talks all week. Eh, it's about them. It's not about me. This dude wanted this game. So bad. he was so bad. We saw a very emotional Mike McDaniel today. Because he coached like a madman on their own 18, fourth and one, going for it. And then it's just like, they're not going little, they're, they're like, you know, they, they were just going crazy, dude. The fact that he, he draws this up. But then this happens because, you know, they, they overturn this call on Trent Sherfield, which is like, what? It was the longest review ever, dude. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and then again, down they they get it to fourth and two 
And it looks on the initial read like a clutch ass catch from Mike Gasecki. Great throw by Tua. They go to the review. It's like hanging on his shoulder. And yeah, like he never looked like he really had it. But you, I mean, Mike, you couldn't tell Mike McDaniel or Wes Welker that because they were on the side of the, this is bull bleep, bull bleep. He's got the headset off. First time I think I've seen the headset off for Mike McDaniel. He was losing it, dude. Not happy with this loss. Yeah, those two, those two, you could see him on the sideline just irate. Like they were pissed off. Bro, when he goes for it on their own 18 yard line, I'm thinking there's no way they snap that ball. There's no way they snap that ball. They're just trying to get, uh, you know, a, an offsides call and, uh, and, and they're going to punt it away. They come out. I mean, they don't, they, there's not even, no hard count or anything. Tua just hikes it right away. And they knew exactly where they were going to go. Bro, wheelbarrow football from Mike McDaniel. I know. Wheelbarrow re- football. Really Crazy. wanted this one. By the way, Peterson breaking news as we're doing this show. Uh, Kyle Shanahan has revealed that uh, Jimmy Garoppolo has a broken foot. He is done for the season. Wow. So it looks like we will be taking on Birdie in the Super Bowl for the rematch, just so <laughs> everybody knows. What's his name again? Wow. Uh, Purdy. Purdy. My bad. Yeah. yeah. So I, I could tell. I could tell you're not from. Uh, you know, you didn't go out much in Miami because Purdy Lounge was like a spot. You know, that was, was like it? my my spot. Purdy that Lounge. Was your spot. I've never. Been Purdy, Purdy Lounge, Lounge was my. Yeah. Well, closed. Rest in peace. May God rest her soul. But Purdy Lounge was my spot. So you know. Even even harder for me today to watch Brock Purdy just take it to us. Toby, who the hell is this guy, by the way? Where'd this guy I, come from? Mr. He's Mr. Relevant. He was the last pick. He's there, Skylar Thompson, except he doesn't suck. <sighs> that pass by Skylar, by the way. <laughs> I mean, have you ever seen somebody who just wanted the game to be over? As, oh, as, yeah. As, as quick as Skylar like, Thompson. Let's, let's get out of here, dude. Like, just, <laughs> it was, uh, it, it was, it was. Really, really rough. But Tua has taken a lot of accountability on this uh, press conference, reading a lot of the quotes. It starts with me, you know, doing what leaders do. And it was like, look, man, um, I will say that we have this. Jeff Donaldson says Tua has taken the podium with a pretty significant limp on his ankle. Um, but, you know, he is banged up. He just played a football game. So people limping all the time. He says it was a poor performance on my part. Um, and he says his injury is as good as it can be. So. There you go. They got to wait. They got a Sunday night football matchup coming up against uh, Justin Herbert. How are you on time? I don't want you to miss the bus. Are you okay? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I would like to say this, Tobin. If there was one you were going to lose of the next three, it was this one, right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not content with it. I'm upset, especially the way that the game went. But if there was one you were going to lose, it was this one. Look, my overall thoughts are there were a lot of stuff they left on the table. They certainly – got down way too much way too late um i had fit i was and i actually have the receipts on this i'm like look i was texting with my uh my my midday show crew and you know we're like we're keeping faith i'm like one bomb to tyreek we're right back in it and then boom, boom sure enough there it, is. there it is and i really did dude after the wheelbarrow play i thought no way they're losing this game no yeah. effing way they're losing this game um so it hurts like it was still there for them late um and to, to have it, uh, to have, you know, the loss, of, it hurt. But I think, I hope Dolphin fans, like, realize, like, you know, like, this is, I, I think because they are contenders, and even in a game they didn't play well to still be in there with a chance to win, um, I think almost says something about them, too. But I, I truly feel like, and I, I mean this, with the way the Chargers are playing, I hope that they take this and they smoke that team next week because that's <laughs> not a real environment they're going to. It's a it's a Mickey Mouse stadium. There'll be more Dolphin fans than Charger fans, and and hopefully it sets them up for a, a hell of a matchup against the Bills. But yeah, this one, uh, I, I get what you're saying. This is it, they still lost to a really really star studded team, but a star studded team that did have a, a a rookie quarterback in there, yeah, um, out of nowhere. So that one also that one also hurts. And I also got got in this podcast. I got to give a shout out to Christian Wilkins today because. That dude was all over the place. I don't know how he, he led the team in tackles today or was tied for the lead in tackles today. He's a D lineman. Um, you know, he just uh, – he, he played – I thought he played really well today for the most part. It was, uh, it was just unfortunate that they, they, uh, they, they, they couldn't get, get off the field at third down, man. It was a yeah. tough one, and uh, they need a, there's a lot of bounce back that needs to happen from this one too. A lot of learning can happen from this one. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Um, all right, I, I do think I, I need a ride because I, I don't want to miss this. I, I got to get to L.A., Tobin, so I don't want to miss I understand. I understand, yeah. man. Enjoy it. <laughs> That's a porpoise spot, everybody. We'll see you.